What's up, everybody? What's up? The NCAA are coming down with a infractions ruling against the LSU Tigers um, today. We'll be receiving that news sometime noon, I believe noon central, 1 Eastern p.m. time for this NCAA Zoom conference to begin where they will um, basically give LSU their punishment for these NCAA fractions, which, you know, I'm getting a lot of questions. What are the infractions? But I think this might be about the James Craig situation, which was just settled about a month ago in a courtroom where a judge ordered LSU to pay Craig around 494000 I believe it was, for uh, his, to pay off the rest of his contract, which we tried to terminate. Um, based on his NCAA AA violations, which he incurred upon the program. Now, these violations include, you know, Craig going up and seeing seeing recruits personally during 2020, during COVID-19 at its height. Going up in spring of 2020, June of 2020... And, uh, you know, skirting right the second the dead period would end, he would appear. And, you know, this includes in-person contact during COVID-19's uh, worst, worst, uh, worst moments. This is what Arizona State are facing right now. This is why Herm Edwards was probably fired as long as, as well as the team playing like shit for Arizona State. But... Arizona State did the same thing, in-person recruiting and including uh, them coming to the stadium, actually, uh, during 2020 season, uh, during COVID-19. But this is James Craig going out and recruiting players. You know, we're thinking probably up in Michigan with Garrett Dellinger. We're thinking probably going out in Virginia with Tristan Lee to, uh, you know, try and get an advantage when uh, no other teams could get that contact. Maybe it could be from, you know, also basketball. I'm thinking there's also going to be some basketball stuff going on with there with the the fallout from Will Wade. Um, I'm not sure if there's been a full judgment yet done with the Will Wade scandal and the findings there, which, you know, for all of all of the defense of Will Wade, the guy was caught red-handed doing some really stupid, stupid stuff. I mean, just juvenile stuff like using his wife's name on a bank account for these funds. Just, just mafioso type stuff. Could LSU be hit with a lack of institutional control because of the problems with basketball and football? I wouldn't anticipate that. I could not see that. I would I would be shocked. I think that would be the NCAA literally licking their chops for blood, smelling blood in the water and saying, this is a time where we can really, you know, Say, hey, we still have authority over the college game, even though we're we're, we're barely grabbing onto it. We're barely, you know, our fingernails are completely just ripped apart and covered in blood, just dragging, just trying to, just clutching at their power over the college game. And this could be a, you know, hey, a fond farewell to a, a program they've always hated and they've always gone after, LSU. But hey, you know, this is also a program that have made it easy for the NCAA to go after us because we co- we've cooperated. We've walked right into their into their nest. When you cooperate with the NCAA, you, things never go well for you, you know. It's very interesting. And it's uh, I believe it was the Oklahoma State basketball team coach who who went on a rant against the NCAA that was just beautiful. If you have not seen that, definitely look that up. That is one of the best uh, 
distilled arguments for why the NCAA is corrupt, out of their depth, um, doing things that really have actually been detrimental to the game, detrimental to the student-athletes, ruined lives unnecessarily, ruined careers unnecessarily. Um, You know, Will Wade just wanted LSU to win at all costs. Does that mean he deserves to go to jail, you know, ruin his career, all this, like, I don't know. (laughs) But what he did crossed a lot of legal lines as well. As for football, I expect, you know, at the worst, scholarship reductions. And I I don't anticipate a bowl ban because we've already, you know, voluntarily banned ourselves from a bowl, which is such a huge concession, I believe. Such a rare concession. And when it's done, it's usually rewarded by the NCAA, double, NCAA you know, saying, okay, you went that far to, to, to make it right, to, to, to say, hey, we did this, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll make sure that we you know, clean this up. But could this also go back to the Les Miles era with recruiting violations possibly in that era that are unsettled? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. This could be an all-in-one inclusive package here by the NCAA where they want to try and include as many eras of the LSU program as possible and try and maybe stick a lack of institutional control upon the program, which at this point would would be really tough Even with a top five recruiting class, it would be very tough to hang on to some of those guys. We'd probably hang on a lot of of the local guys, of course, but really tough to hang on to some of those national targets. I just, it's very interesting, the timing, right? When LSU get a bit of momentum going, big SEC win, the first SEC win under, under Brian Kelly, everyone's starting to feel like LSU turning the page as a program, and then here we are right back in the thick of it, things are unsettled. And, you know, things are unsettled with the Title IX stuff as well. There's a lot of Title IX stuff that is still unsettled. A lot of lawsuits still come down the pipeline as well. The Hush Blackwell thing was not the end of that. And so LSU aren't completely out of the woods here. And as we know with today, with the infractions rulings coming down on LSU Maybe it's it's just basketball, but I think it's also going to be basketball, football combined here, um, and we'll see how far it goes. Um, we'll see how far it goes. This is definitely going to inc- include the Craig stuff. This is definitely going to include some, you know, interesting stuff under the Orgeron era that was infractions. But as for going way back to Les Miles, that could also be as well. In 2011, there was some stuff where Frank Wilson was actually um, officially admonished as being dishonest and not forthcoming by Joe Oliva himself. Um, and I don't know if that was just a, to, to save face of the NCAA or whatever, but I don't know. I don't know. There's, there's, there's a lot that the NCAA can definitely investigate with LSU, but it also seems like they are grasping for anything they can find. And when you look at any program, there's, any, there's a lot you can investigate. When you look at any program and how they recruit, there's a ton that is that are violations. There's a ton. There's a ton of things that are going on that are violations. You cannot tell me that LSU are the, you know, dirtiest program and all this stuff because NCAA, NCAA has a hard on for us over the last few years. You know, it's very much a reaction to 2019. It's very much a, you know. LSU causing a lot of their own problems under Orgeron after the 2019 season as well. And um, 
there's also just a public public relations disconnect when it comes to Title IX because of the silence around LSU, you know, with a program knowing that they can't talk about these legal proceedings. They're forbidden from talking about these legal proceedings with Title IX, and so it becomes a, a shroud of silence around LSU. And really, these guys can't, and, and these women can't talk about what's going on. These are ongoing legal proceedings. And so it feeds that narrative of silence and not being cooperative and violations. And so LSU aren't helping themselves. And then there's also a a narrative that's being exaggerated. And then you've also got the NCAA who are just, I mean, what the hell are they doing here? I mean, this, I, I I understood that this was going to come down at some point. And we were waiting for it, and I think they were also waiting for the Craig judgment to come in. But I can see this going two ways. Either LSU get a slap on the wrist, or the NCAA really have a show of force for their last time, it seems, on their way out, and really give LSU a lashing. I, a lack of institutional control, I cannot see that happening. Can you see that happening? It just seems so harsh. It seems it's so rarely given out. RICO charges against LSU were thrown out, completely dismissed by a judge, a federal judge, and a local judge, both saying that this is just uh, ridiculous, ridiculous charges. So LSU have already been legally cleared of a lot of those type of things. Um, the Rosie Finch boy, Oh, Rosie Finch boys thing with coach Ed Orgeron potentially, you know, being something that was a vehicle for recruiting violations that has been completely thrown out. Not saying that, you know, everyone's innocent in that or that that entity was innocent in, you know, recruiting violations. We're not sure, but in the court of law, it was thrown out. That should mean something to the NCAA. It probably won't. This is about optics more than anything for the NCAA. This is about optics. This is about how it looks. How LSU... How they want LSU to look as a program. We'll always be the bad boys of the SEC... Sure. But this is just such a... The timing is like... Oh, you think you're turning the page, LSU? Think again. You think you can move on from the, the crazy eras of the of Orgeron and Miles? and Think again. We're going to have this stuff shoved in our, shoved in our faces for, for a little bit here at the start of the Kelly era. And Brian Kelly will suffer the consequences from it. And that's, that's sad. Brian Kelly's going to have to deal with the consequences from these past regimes. I don't know what will happen with basketball. Basketball could be the, the thing that's really the focus here with these infractions. But... Expect it to include football. Expect it to focus on football as well. And expect it to... Expect it to to be a disappointing uh, ruling as far as an LSU fan. Because either way, we know how the NCAA work with us. uh, They're scorched earth. I know Scott Woodward had some connections with Mark Emmert. Those are gone. I believe Mark Emmer is not in his position anymore, right? Maybe he can have still have some pull. Help LSU get that slap on the wrist. I'm just uh I'm a little I'm a little nervous about it, to be honest. Because we know what it could be about, but we know there's probably gonna be a surprise thrown in there. We know what these violations and the rulings should be centered on. But 
the NCAA, the NCAA are always really good at uh, pulling something out at the last second and saying this was something that really put it over the top. We're going to hit you with this. I expect everybody to uh, be really pissed at the NCAA for the rest of this weekend and for this to be potentially something that makes some recruits pause when they consider LSU. But at the same time, LSU has had recruiting violations before. LSU has, has fought with the NCAA before. And the NCAA aren't going have any, to have any power anymore. So really, that would be my message to LSU recruits. No matter what goes down today, it will have, it should not have a lasting effect on the LSU program considering the NCAA's dwindling power over the next year or two. So if there's an intense ruling, lack of institutional control type ruling, perhaps LSU and the new structure getting away from the NCAA as the power of the governing power, perhaps that could free LSU from those strictures. So much to think about, so much to talk about, but I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. We'll just see what comes down. We'll see what um, they're really focused on and really, you know, going hard at. And uh, we'll see what we'll see what happens. We'll have our reaction. Take it easy, everybody.